got to love, got to do, got to do this. $1,500, full frame. No, it's not full frame. $1,500, 10-bit, 4K video with the Canon colors, the Canon autofocus. Sheesh. Sheesh. Wow, look at that Komodo. Look at that red autofocus, what? Canon who? Canon who? All right guys, this is a loaded video, a lot to talk about, so let's just dive right in. Hello, my name's Corey Mayo. I run a media production company here in Fresno, California, and this is my Canon R7, and in this video, this is my review. I'm gonna go over some of the features, some of the things I like about it, some of the things I do not like about it. Quick disclaimer, this is just a video review. So if you are looking for Canon R7 photo reviews, this is not the video for you. Nice to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, go check out some other videos on YouTube. I'm sure they can help you. I am mainly a videographer, so I'm shooting mostly video. So I got to test this out for a month on real actual shoots um, in, in a production environment. Um, this has been my B camera with my Red Komodo. If you guys don't have a lot of time to watch the whole review, in a nutshell, this is a fantastic B camera to the Red Komodo, to the C70, to a ton of other things. This can definitely be your A camera as well, and um, I have no problem vouching for that. If you are mainly shooting uh, you know, corporate interview type stuff, uh, weddings, uh, this is a fantastic camera. Um, I primarily just keep this thing in 4K fine mode, 24 frames a second, and I'm off and running. I shoot most of my stuff in 24 frames a second, not big use cases for slow motion and stuff. So 1,500 bucks, you are getting C log three, fantastic. You can totally grade it. I can match it up with the Red Komodo uh, with some color grading. And yeah, it's just been a phenomenal camera, 1,500 bucks. I cannot recommend this camera enough. This is a steal. You got articulating screen, takes great photos, 33 megapixels. This is just fantastic camera. So I'm primarily a Sony shooter. I've been a Sony shooter for about four years or so. And uh, I've recently switched over to mainly shooting on red and I've started investing more into the Canon RF glasses because red uses RF mount. So a couple things I've noticed right off the bat from switching from Sony to Canon, um, the skin tones are amazing. Like. People say that like, you know, everything you could be edited together and this and that. To be honest, you don't really wanna be messing around with skin tones and trying to get a look. Uh, getting that look right out of camera is just a huge cost saver. And I have to say that Canon skin tones are phenomenal. Um, I shot a wedding, um, the corporate interviews, just everything just so beautifully saturated in the red and oranges for skin tones and it looks fantastic. Um, primarily shoot on C-Log3 and I use uh, Canon's provided conversion LUT looks amazing. You can do some more fine tweaking on DaVinci Resolve. And if you guys are not using DaVinci Resolve and you guys are using Adobe Premiere, just just shame on you. Guys, just just shame. We're gonna we're gonna take a moment of silence for all the Adobe Premiere users out there. It's time to switch. This is this is a PSA to Adobe Premiere users. It's time to switch to Resolve. All right, back to the video. Some of the things I've ran into that are like, whoa, this is weird, this is strange. Um, so on the Sony's, you can completely remove the battery door and it still works. And believe it or not, I use this all the time. I do this feature all the time when I'm shooting weddings because if I need to quickly switch out uh, or if it's an interview setup, if I need to quickly switch out the battery, I can just pop it out, pop a new one in and it's good to go and I don't have to worry about battery doors and all this stuff. So I usually pop that out temporarily when I'm doing shoots. This camera does not turn on when you don't have the battery door attached. And I had to learn that the hard way, this was my B camera on a wedding, and I ended up shooting the entire wedding on the red, which was not expected, not planned, but everything worked out in the end. But yeah, so this camera is completely unfunctionable without the battery door. Canon, if you're watching this video, highly recommend. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know why that is. I mean, on the Sony cameras, you can do that. It would be fantastic if I can remove the door. And uh, yeah, that would, yeah, that'd be great if we can, if we can do that. Telling myself I wasn't gonna remove these, but I already did it. It's the doors, the flaps, the door flaps on the, the media ports here. Um, they're the stupid, like flimsy, like, the ones that just hang there and they're just like in the way. 
Um, yeah, I hate this design. Like, just, just stop that. I've already ripped mine out. I highly recommend don't do that. I'm sure there's like a more better way to do that, but I just, that's, that's what I did. So don't recommend that, but it just gets out of the way. So now I have a clean setup so I can use this. Uh, another caveat, micro HDMI. So if you are a video shooter and you're gonna use the Canon R7 for your B camera, immediately, immediately get a cage. Right now, currently, this is the only cage available, the small rig, uh, black mamba, whatever. This is like the only one available for the R7 currently. Get a cage and immediately get this HDMI clamp. Where can you find this HDMI clamp? I have no idea. So on Small Rig's website, they have this um, on some of their marketing material as with an HDMI clamp. But if you go on Amazon, if you go on their website, it is cannot be found. So for me to get this clamp, I had to email Small Rig, ask them that I have the Canon R7 and your Black Mambo, whatever, uh, cage. And can you please send me the HDMI clamp that fits this? Because I did buy the HDMI clamp that fits the R6 cage. It will not work with this cage. You have to have this one. So, I mean, hopefully it's available by the time this video goes up and you can find it on Amazon. But if not, you have to do all that. That's horrible. Uh, by the way, here's my quick review on this cage. It's okay. It's good, not great. Um, this, I use Kessler's quick release system. So um, I can use the bottom cage here for uh, mounting my camera. It does, it's just not as fluent as Kessler's actual like primary bottom plates, but it does work in a pinch and that's kind of what I've been using. Um, and then yeah, everyone's been mentioning this, this little gap right here from the body cap to like, you can't get your finger in there so you can release this very easily. It is really tight. And uh, honestly, they're gonna probably end up updating this cage so if you need a cage right away, I mean, get it. But if you can wait, I would definitely wait. Um, so good, not great. Um, yeah, it's got some great functionality. Um, I, I hate the branding here. Like I don't wanna, I don't wanna rep, like I don't wanna have small rig right there. Like I'd rather just like not be there, but um, I mounted a quick release on this side because vertical video is like the rage these days. So yeah, this is my vertical video like gimbal camera. Um, but all in all, okay cage, it's kind of the only one available, so you really don't have an option. Yeah, so let's like build my rig. So if you guys are interested on uh, my Canon R7 rig, uh, I'm gonna build it up for you today, right now, and let's get it going. So here we have Canon R7, and we have the small rig, black mambo, whatever, cage that is mounted here. Here I mounted a quick release, Arca Swiss quick release on this side for vertical video, so that is good to go. Here I have a rosette mount here, and this is gonna be with my handle. Um, you can use any handle you want. This particular one is just off of my Tiltamax Nucleus that I do not use anymore, but I still have the handle, so this is, I mean, by all means don't get this handle if you just need a handle, because it's ridiculously expensive. But any uh, rosette handle will work right here, and so that just goes on there and you have a handle. Fantastic, easier maneuverability, get your hands off the camera. Um, In-body stabilization is fantastic on this, um, no complaints at all. I do tons of handheld footage. That matched with a lens that has in-body stabilization, you're good to go. Uh, lens of choice for run and gun, you really can't beat the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 with image stabilization. I was in between getting this one and the 28 to 70, but honestly, with the Komodo, with not having image stabilization, you have, I had to get something that has image stabilization in the lens, and this one offers it, the 28 to 70 doesn't, and, and honestly, that one's like crazy expensive, so highly recommend this, the Hawk Lock. This is just like, comes in this setup here, and monitor, it's just, it just clips on. Like, it's that fast. Let me do that again. Boom. Clips on, you're good to go. This little lever here clicks off, you're good. This goes here in the cold shoe or in the hot shoe, tighten it down, good to go, we're good. Monitor of choice, here is, uh, you can use whatever. Honestly, I like small HD stuff. I use mostly small HD, but I just happen to already have this monitor. It's a good option. It's like 2000 nits. Uh, this is the Feel World 4K Ultra Bright. Um, I just wanted something that's daylight viewable. 
Um, if you have the money, obviously go small HD, but um, I just had already had this and yeah, so I'm using it. So this is like a 4.5 inch monitor. If you're digging this one, it's great. Uh, you can use your own LUTs. I have the Canon uh, C-Log3 LUT that converts it to Rex 709. Highly recommend getting that if you guys wanna view your footage, you don't wanna view log footage. And that clicks on just like that. And now you have a monitor and a handle. Camera's coming together. This is the Rode Wireless Goes. I think you guys know what this thing is. These are the first edition ones. I've had these for like two years now going and they're still running strong. Battery lasts a really long time. And so I'm just gonna use them, that's fine. So Rode Wireless Go, that goes on here. And here is, uh, I use time code with uh, my interview shoots and the DD TC ones come with this like Velcro little attachment here. If you're wondering what that is, it's just Velcro and it, it just Velcros right here. So I can just quickly mount that back on and you're good to go. Uh, favorite cable is from small HD. It is like the perfect size for this setup, uh, micro HD to full size HDMI. And that goes in here. Good to go. Make sure you use your cable clamp. I've already broken one of my micro HDMI cables. These things are so fragile. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, no, I don't need a HDMI cable clamp. I'm gonna be careful. Yeah, I'm not gonna break one. You, you really, like, it is such a fragile port. And that's just something you gotta deal with uh, with these budget cameras is the micro HDMI port. So like it's a like you have like if you're gonna shoot video on the R7, get yourself a cage, get yourself the HDMI clamp. It's gonna save your butt. Um, thankfully, my port has been fine. There's no issues there. Um, just the cable broke, so I'm good to go. And then now we have a 3.5 millimeter. Honestly, I hate the one that the road comes with. It's just ridiculously long and big. So here is one that I got from a Sony shotgun mic. But yeah, I just like smaller thinner cables. I don't like the huge bungee cord red cables. That's just me. But get whatever cable you like. That goes into your Rode Wireless Go. And then it plugs in to, I do like that it's right angle as well. And it plugs into your microphone jack. And there is our full setup, run and gun, go vertical mount. You can do Regular um, 24 to 70 is gonna be good for most of your focal lengths and that is my Canon R7 cinema rig setup. This is what I use for running gun setups and you know it's easily breakdownable and you can you know minimize it. So if you don't wanna go screen, take the screen off easily with the hawk lock. Like that is just like so fast. So love that, that is incredible. Swivels left and right. So if you wanna do self filming, you can swivel it back. And uh, yeah, that's my whole setup for the R7. My conclusion for the Canon R7, fantastic camera with some quirks to it. Um, honestly, if you're looking for a camera in the $1,500 range that's got fantastic 10-bit 4K video, this is gonna be it. Honestly, and uh, I don't, you know, it is, uh, and not, it's not full, it's not full, uh, full frame, so if that's uh, a want for you, great. I don't, I don't need full frame. That's completely fine. Komodo is not full frame and this is not. And honestly, they, they work well together. You get some more extra reach out of your, your glass. And yeah, if, uh, if you don't, if you don't want to go RF glass, uh, if you already have some old EF stuff, this stuff converts well, all the autofocus works great. Um, autofocus is fantastic on this stuff. Like just the, the, yeah, the dual pixel autofocus is fantastic. Uh, you get C-Log3, so you can match up with other cameras, so I have no problem matching the colors up with the red. And uh, yeah, it's only 1500 bucks. You're getting amazing 4K quality, and that's about it. My settings, pretty much, this stays on 4K, the ultra fine, uh, 24 frames a second in C-Log3, and that's pretty much it. That's all this camera is set to. Um, it does have slow motion capabilities in there. You can do 60 frames a second, I think 120 in 1080 but uh, that's about it, yeah. In-body stabilization is fantastic, especially paired with a lens like the 24-70 RF with stabilization on as well. Um, yeah, fantastic. And like I said, a couple of those quirks, uh, battery door can't be removed, 
um, you know, not ideal. Uh, the micro HDMI, not ideal, but you just get an HDMI cable clamp and you're good to go, but that's a fragile port. Do not like the flaps on the media side of the camera. That is just needs to be better, like the Sony A1 and a couple other companies. They fixed that situation. Um, camera layout, I'm brand new to Canon, so I, I'm not familiar with the older layout or the other cameras. Some people said they don't like this little dial situation they got here. Um, I don't mind it, it works great. Um, I definitely like the RF uh, functionality of these RF lenses. Um, I usually set this to iris and that's just like super convenient. Um, yeah, loving Canon RF glass. Uh, I have the 15 to 35, 24 to 70. They both have 82 millimeter diameters on the front lens, so that's like super convenient. All my filters are all 82 millimeters, so that just works well. Um, yeah, that's everything. So yeah, that's my setup, Canon R7. Let me know if you guys have any questions. As always, all the links to all the stuff mentioned in this video will be in the description if you guys want to pick it up. And uh, full disclosure, I, everything is bought by me. This isn't sponsored by Canon. Uh, small rig, uh, any, no, it, this is literally a real world review of a guy that does video production for a living and I have used this gear for over a month. So this is like, I'm use, I've used it today. I literally had a three hour shoot today and I came here shooting a YouTube video. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, if this is valuable, if you're into this thing, rad. You should subscribe, you should like this and uh, leave a comment saying uh, rad mayo. That would be fantastic. All right, anyways, this is getting weird. I'll see you guys in the next one and um, yeah, later. See you, see you on the next one. Peace.